Chavo, thank you very much for talking to me this afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be able to chat to a wrestling legend like you. Oh, man, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Now, the Guerreros are obviously an amazing wrestling family, and you're third generation there, so there's never any doubts in your mind that you were going to be a professional wrestler, was there? Um, you know what? In my mind, no. I uh, grew up with a wrestling ring in the backyard, literally. You know, we we literally had one growing up. and My first time I was ever in it was probably before I could walk. They were probably crawling in that thing. So, um... To me, I didn't think I was going to be anything else but a wrestler. Uh, other people had other, you know, other, you know, ideas in mind. To be honest, they, uh, you know, wrestling was it's not there's not a given, you know, and especially the way wrestling was was going, which is the biggest, the big, you know, the big man thing, bigger, 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 bigger. Everybody was six foot six, three hundred pounds, um, you know, and all of us we weren't, you know. Um, you know, there's no guarantee, you know, and and our our family knew that, so. You know, even with Eddie, you know, Eddie was such a, we, they called him a, a chion, a, a crybaby, <laughs> you know. So he was such a little young, cry-spoiled little brat, and they didn't think he was going to be able to do it, you know. And then all of a sudden, he just blossomed out of it, and, and God looked upon us, and we were able to do it. It's amazing. Now, yeah. um, one of the first times that I can remember seeing you was watching old tapes of WCW. And sure. you were out there with your hobby horse, Pepe. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, was Pepe an idea that you had, or was that something that the um, the creative team brought to you? No, that was Pepe. definitely something that 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 uh, me and Eddie came up with. You know, what happened was that he and I were feuding, and I started going kind of crazy on the show. And we went to his house for a barbecue, and his little girls came out on this little hobby horse, and I said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, I got to take that to the show next week." So I ended up doing it, took it to the show, and you know, people kind of they. They were like, oh, that's cool. So the next week after that, I didn't come out with it, and there were Pepe signs and hobby horses and stuff, and all of a sudden I was like, whoops, I guess i got to come out with this thing now. <laughs> so uh, that's something that, that you know, just kind of just happened. It wasn't planned. It just, you know, sometimes the best things in wrestling just, just happen. Mm, definitely. And he ended up getting put in a wood chipper by Norman Smiley. That's right. Yeah, yep, yep. It, uh, Norman that was- Smiley will always be remembered for killing Pepe. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds like that was a lot of fun, Chava. And um, speaking of fun, I've read a story in uh, one of the WWE books about a rib that you managed to play on the road, getting a police officer involved and ribbing the Miz. I was wondering, do you have any other great stories of time spent on the road, just filling time? Oh, man, there were so many, so many of them, because we were on the road so much, man. We were like, you know, 280-plus days a year on the road that you had to do, you know, joke with people and mess with them and rib them we call it because it's not you kind of go crazy you know you just kind of keep yourself occupied and um you know we would just constantly just do stuff and you know um you know nothing harmful but you know all innocent ribs but we would you know uh you know take somebody's shoes and put shaving cream in them or something like that and just just little things you know like that um (laughs) that people just you know that they uh that would just kind of get them mad you know like one time booker t uh he had some uh he had some fried chicken you know and and uh somebody hit it so when somebody hit it we did it on purpose then all of a sudden somebody else got some fried chicken and we were all eating it like "Mm, it's all good fried chicken so and you know it was all over our faces on like as much as we could get it over our faces and fingers we did it on purpose you know and he came in and was like what the heck is going on? He freaked out thinking that we were all eating his chicken, you know, and we're like, hey, he's like, is that my chicken? We're like, no. We just would walk out of the room, and he was so pissed off, and then all of a sudden he moves his bag and sees his big thing of chicken. He was like, okay, you guys got me, you got me, and then we'd just look at him and laugh, you know. But it was just constantly things like that. That's hilarious. That's great. Um, how do you find uh, TNA compares to WWE in terms of um, you know, the travel and your schedule, your time on the road, and the time that you get to spend with your family? Uh, the travel is definitely a lot less. The um, um, difference between TNA and WWE is, is WWE is really is a live event company, and TNA is more of a television company where they do most of their stuff on on TV. And they do have some house shows and live house shows, and, and it's getting it's going to be getting more and more, you know. But at uh, at right now, it's the, you know the schedule is great. We're able to stay home more and uh, and be fresh. You know, I get to, to work and. I'm, you know, I'm fresh, I'm rested, and I'm giving my all on, you know, an impact show. Yeah. Um, in one of the early WWE magazines, you've got a recipe in there for um, traditional Mexican grilled steak. 
I've made it. Sure. Delicious. Yeah. Are you a bit of a yeah. whiz in the kitchen? Is that one of the things you find you're doing and you're trying that home? Uh, my wife is the whiz in the kitchen. I'm the whiz on the barbecue. Right. Yeah, I'm the barbecue guy. I'll barbecue everything, you know, but... Uh, as far as in the kitchen, no, nah, man, I'm, that's 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 my wife. She she's she's the bomb. <laughs> um, when you made your TNA debut, um, you talked about how the Guerrero family has held a title in every promotion they've been in, except for TNA. Yet you've got the opportunity right. at Bound for Glory um, to hold the tag team titles. Um, what's that going to mean to you if you and Hernandez are able to pick up the belts? You know, that's going to show just. You know that I was uh, I wasn't just coming here blowing steam. You know it's true. I'm gonna we're gonna leave he, he would, uh, Bound for Glory with the tag team champions of the world. And uh, you know he's a multiple time champion. I'm a multiple time tag team champion. And and uh, I think together uh, they can't beat us. You know. And I tell all the other wrestlers lace up them boots because uh, that match is going to steal the show. Mm, definitely. For sure I mean, have, um, they've, you've both had successful singles careers, but you sort of primarily seem to gravitate back towards tag teams. Um, so do you find it easy to work with Hernandez, seeing that you've both come from that, you know, that mutual, that tag team background, just proud tag You know what, this, really, my, my, my um, run, my, my best run has been singles, to be honest. I mean, I've really, I'm only a, a what, a, maybe a three-time tag team champion. Um, you know, twice in WWE, once in Rinka King, uh, maybe once in w- WCW. So I'm, you know, over a 10 or 12 time champion. So it's mostly been singles. Um, I just think, um, you know, with tag team, tag teaming is um, it's an art form. You know, you have to be able to gel really well with your partner, and uh, I think that's something that me and Hernandez do do well together. And we're actually just get, just getting started, and we're going to get better and better. So. I think definitely look out for us. Um, how do you find it working with Kurt Angle now that it's been about 10 years since you were sort of doing a similar thing and working with Angle as part of the what was dubbed the SmackDown 6 back in mm-hmm. the WWE? You know what? Kurt, now we're going to be called the TNA 6 because it's going it's right now me, me and Hernandez and AJ and Kurt and Kaz and Daniels because we're, you know, tearing it down, but it's great. To get in the ring with Kurt again, I, I, you know, think that he's one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. And for me to get in there, uh, he's one of those guys that just pushes me to my limit every time I get in the ring, and I try to do the same thing to him, you know. So um, it just, it's just we gel well together. It's, it's, it's fun to, to get back in the ring with him. Um, I saw earlier today, or possibly yesterday, you sent out the tweet saying that you'd like to welcome King Mo to Impact Wrestling with a frog splash. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about King Mo coming in from the MMA world to the pro wrestling? I think it's I think it's awesome, man. I think it's a great crossover, and a lot of the MMA guys really want to cross over to to pro. You know, I know a, a lot of them. I know you know Rampage Jackson very well, and I know that he wants to do some stuff, and a lot of them really do, and a lot of them are big fans. You know, it's just a it's just a good progression. Um, you know, and vice versa. You know, we we you know do jiu-jitsu and roll with those guys and strike with those guys and uh, not necessarily saying that I'm going to train, I'm going to switch, I'm going to, um, you know, do, make the move over to MMA, but, you know, other wrestlers have, you know, like Brock Lesnar and, and you know, Bobby Lashley and now Batista's having his, his fight coming up here, you know, so it's um, it's kind of a good progression, you know, anything in the ring we just kind of, we love and gravitate to. Do you watch a lot of MMA? Are you a fan? Absolutely. I'm a fan of MMA, of boxing, of wrestling, anything in the ring, any contact, judo, jiu-jitsu, sumo. Yeah, I'm just a fan of all that stuff. Cool. Hey, um, a couple of weeks back before Impact, you wrestled a dark match against uh, two New Zealanders, Kingy and Kaha, the Iwi. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, do you remember that? Do you have any um, thoughts on that? Perhaps any feedback for those guys? Yeah, no, I think they were good, really good. You know, I, I think they have a, a, a future in in wrestling, and uh, I wish them nothing but the best. You know, they were like good, strong guys, and were beating me down pretty good. So, um, you know, I, I I just hope I definitely I, I I think there's a place for everybody in wrestling. You know, cool. I think they'll be very, be very pleased to hear that. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you have any advice for perhaps some other aspiring wrestlers in New Zealand, or just you know any anyone who happens to listen? I to tell it? everybody to to get a degree before you decide to come you know into anything. Is, is get the, get your plan B because um, you know before you could have a high school diploma and be fine, but now you can't. You know your your college degree is kind of like your high school diploma now. Every, you have to have that to get anywhere. Kind of really any 
um, any really good job now. I mean, there's exceptions, of course, but I just have to tell everybody, get a plan B and then come in, try wrestling, try it out, follow your dream and go for it. Cool. Um, you've come out to New Zealand before on a tour. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love, I love uh, the the Kiwis. They call it, you know. But they're, yeah. New Zealand is such a great, great country. They, the, the people are so nice. They treat us very well, and uh, I can, really can't wait to go back. Oh, that's amazing to hear. Um, is there any? No, they're left? great. They've, they're, every time I've, I've been there, I don't know, maybe three times now, and they've been, they've been, it's a beautiful country, and they've been so, so nice and so gracious for sure. Is there anywhere left um, in the world that you'd still like to go? You seem to have been all over. I've never been to China. I would love to go to China. I've been everywhere else except for like Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, but um, no desire I've to go to Antarctica. No. Well, I can't say I don't have a desire, but you know, I don't think there's too much wrestling there, so I don't probably wouldn't end up going there. You know, uh, I I have I almost crashed in Russia one time so I've never actually gone there and wrestled there but we I have been to Russia right hey um and finally Chavo got to ask yeah. um what's the possibility of TNA as a whole you and the whole Impact Wrestling crew coming down this way and putting on a show in New Zealand I would love I would love to make uh you know a a multi multi-country uh trip down there and and uh you know hit New Zealand and hit Australia and uh, hit other, you know, other little countries around there. I would love it. This I've been there before, and I'd love to go back. You know, everybody in, like I said, in in, in New Zealand, they treat us so well, and um, I think be very well received. Well, we would love to have you and the whole Impact Wrestling roster down here too. So yeah. Well, cool, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Hey, and thank you very much for your time today, Chuffer. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Ah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much, David. Appreciate it. Cool, and uh, hey, best of luck for Bound for Glory. I'll certainly be cheering you on. All right, man, I appreciate it.